Hey, it's Travis. Today we're going to look at some common alpha investment mistakes and we might even find a gem or two. Now, I want to draw your attention to this burn tensor site here on Hugging Face. The link is in the description. This shows the burn percent for miners on every particular subnet. What it is, is when subnet owners decide to basically burn all of the miner emissions. When that happens, miners receive nothing. There are no miners. Subnet owners still receive their 18% along with validators and stakers also receive their 41%. So this burn percent is what percentage of the miners emissions here are burned instead of given to miners. So the subnets that have 100% miner burn here, they are producing nothing. Maybe there's an exception here or there for uh, subnets with very special tokenomics or something. But for the most part, all of these subnets here that have 100% miner emission burns, they are producing nothing right now. And my biggest concern is that this is exactly how a scam would operate, where the subnet owners still get their emission, they're not producing anything, and, and they could be planning to dump the alpha at some point. Now, this is certainly not true of all subnets with 100% minor burn, but it's certainly something to keep in mind. And the way that I view this is that anything lower than 100 is innocent until proven guilty. So all these guys up here are guilty until proven innocent. These guys here are innocent until proven guilty, at least as far as minor burn percent. So specifically for this 99% here, Tau Hash, they have some interesting tokenomics that they're trying out on the subnet. And so they are actually producing work, mining in their case uh, of Bitcoin. So I just stay away from these subnets completely. I think it's just better safe than sorry. Eventually at some point, I hope that the subnet owners turn on the emissions for miners and therefore start producing something with their subnet. So before looking at some other promising subnets, let's take a look at today's sponsor, Bitcast. So if you scroll down here on the price column, you can see that Bitcast is way, way down here at 0.006. So BitCast is the decentralized creators economy, paying creators like me to create videos. So I'm a miner on this subnet, getting paid by this subnet to make videos like this one. So I can actually show you today's video brief requirements for me to get paid here. So I'm gonna highlight two or more BitTensor subnets. I'm gonna highlight some centralized competitors and compare them against those centralized competitors and talk about BitCast for a few seconds here. Now, the other thing I'll mention about BitCast is since I know it fairly well, I have a pretty good idea as to the value that they're producing at 0.006. Now, I think this is a fair price for BitCast. I don't think it's overpriced. I don't think it's underpriced. I think it's about right right now. You can't really compare it with something like Shoots, which is a very mature subnet that is producing a lot of value, but it's certainly producing a lot more values than some of the lower priced subnets down here. Now to find subnet gems, usually what I do is I go to Taustahatch slash subnets here. I set it to lowest price first here because those are the subnets that have a possibility of doing 100x, whereas the higher price subnets like Shoots or Targon, they have no chance of doing a 100x just based on how the tokenomics works on BitTensor. I've explained that in other videos where I discuss the sum of subnet prices. So I'm sorting by price ascending here, and then you can go and take a look at each one and see what they're up to. So in this case for Tiger Beta, they actually have, usually on Tau Stats, there's some website data here. They're, they actually have no website, no GitHub, nothing, which of course is a good reason why they have the lowest price right now. Let's take a look at the next one here, Cora, and they actually do have a website and a GitHub. So for Cora here, I'm very skeptical as to whether or not they're doing a minor burn. So I'm going to go to burn tensor here and we're going to look for subnet number 71. And there it is, subnet 71 here. And indeed it has a 100% minor burn. So they're not actually doing any mining right now. They're not actually producing anything right now. So Cora's subnet owner is getting their 18% here and along with their stakers and validators, but no miners are receiving anything on this subnet right now. So just due to the 100% miner burn here on Cora, I'm gonna skip over this subnet and move on to another subnet that is actually producing something. So I built this dashboard that allows me to research subnets much quicker by gathering all the data that I want so that I can compare subnets at a glance and make more educated decisions. So just as a quick introduction here, we can see the name, the price, 
uh, some information about the subnet here. So I can see the biggest commit in their repo. And then we've got the average number of code lines in the last 30 days here. So this is a nice little indicator for me to tell whether or not the subnet owner is active right now. Are they actually building anything right now? And then of course we've got the total alpha and then we've got the total alpha percentage that has been burnt. And then again, we have this minor burn column here with highlights on the ones that are 100% right now. All right, so as before with Tau stats, I'm going to sort by price ascending. We've already taken a look at Tiger Beta and Corda. We found that both of them have 100% minor burn, and we don't even have to look at this third subnet here thanks to the Tau Flute dashboard telling me about the minor burn percentage. Now, FlameWire is an interesting one because they don't have a repo, or at least it doesn't look like they have a repo because they haven't posted it to the Metagraph yet. However, if you go onto their Discord and you looked and you look in their pinned messages, they sure do have a Discord. They just haven't properly put it on the Metagraph yet. Now, I covered FlameWire a little bit in one of my previous videos. From what I can tell from their GitHub contributions over time here, it looks like they are still making changes to the code, so they are still building up their subnet. So for their price here, this actually might be a reasonable bet because not many people know about the GitHub and they do seem to be producing decentralized RPC nodes. When you compare FlameWire to the ones with a cheaper price here uh, with 100% minor burn, one of them doesn't even have a repo. I'm not sure if 128 is doing anything yet. There hasn't been any code written in the last 30 days. Considering these subnets with a cheaper price, FlameWire sticks out to me as a subnet with a lot of growth potential potential for its price. And they are actually doing something despite their Tau stats here uh, showing no GitHub either. They have a website as well. So they're actually building something here, it looks like. And then just looking at their graph here, there's this nice big dip down here, 12% uh, today. Uh, by the time you watch this video, I'm sure it will have recovered or dropped further or done something different here. But uh, from my point of view, uh, this is starting to look pretty juicy as far as a buy. So again, not financial advice. And by the time this video is out, the price is going to be much different. And I wouldn't say necessarily to invest at that time because the graph will have changed between the time that I record this video and the time that you watch this video. I just want to help you with the way that you think about subnet investing here. So let's take a look at Bittrex here, the next price up here. They do have a repository and they are committing code to it, uh, I guess, fairly actively. And judging by the alpha that is out on the subnet, they're rather new. There is no minor burn, no red flags on this one. So this is really intriguing to me. So let's go take a look at their GitHub. And also let's take a look at their biggest commit here. So when I look at these large commits, what I usually do is I take a look at the file name up here and then look at the code. So I'm watching up here as I scroll down. Um, so it's got a bunch of API server code here. Uh, looks like they're doing a bunch of logging differences here. And then there is some logic difference as well. They removed a bunch of code. They added a bunch more. So yeah, they're actually doing some development here, which is really what I'm looking for at this point. I'm checking these commits to make sure that they're not just like making a bunch of changes to the readme file or something like that. So if I click here on this commits here, I can see over time the commits here. So the large one that we were looking at is this one here. It looks like that was a large change that went out recently. Now let's actually look at what Bittrex does because I don't know what it does yet here. A novel recommendation engine built on the BitTensor network. This implementation provides a framework for serving real-time e-commerce recommendations using LLMs. Miners are encouraged to experiment with their own implementations to improve latency and quality. So it looks like their main goal here is to provide recommendations to users to maximize sales for online retailers. So those are things like Netflix, movie recommendations, TikTok reels, Google search engine suggestions. And they're focusing on a narrow but vital area of e-commerce on-site product recommendations for merchants. So I guess the incentive mechanism here rewards miners um, based on their performance metrics and sales events. So latency, diversity, quality, and then whether or not the user actually purchased an item. Now, to me, this is kind of interesting because this is one of those subnets that can take a part of a business and just do it way better than that particular business thanks to the competition between miners. But a subnet is not going to do this out of the box. So they really need to work on their incentive mechanism and and make sure they have all the data required for miners to be able to produce better suggestions than large retailers. 
And now let's just take a look at where this subnet could go if successful. So I just did a quick LLM prompt here for uh, what are the top e-commerce product recommendations and their valuations. So Adobe Commerce uh, leverages Adobe Sensei's AI to deliver personalized product recommendations. So this one's valued at 250 billion. Uh, Salesforce Einstein is a similar thing, 260 billion. So Bittrex has a lot of upside potential. However, they still need to build out their subnet and hook up to everything to make that happen. So there's still a lot of risk in investing in some of these lower price subnets that aren't quite hooked up to everything yet. If you look at something like Shoots, they're fully connected. They're being able to take fiat payments. They're able to do everything that their centralized competitors can almost. And so Bittrex is a long ways away from that. But all things considered here, when you compare it against the lower price subnets here, they are doing work and their subnet owner is very active here. Looks like they're posting a lot of their data here. Um, so that's a really positive thing. Now, the next one on the list here, as far as price ascending goes, is Happy AI. Their subnet also recently was launched. Um, they are committing some code lines here, which is good. So let's take a look at their biggest commit in the last 14 days. Again, remember, I'm watching the file names up here and also looking at some of the code as it flies by. So there's a little bit of code in this evaluator that was done and then it's got some JSON files. These you can generally ignore. Yeah, a lot of logs and 1DB files. So this is not really showing me that they're doing that much work. Let's take a look at the actual repo itself. Okay, it's called Happy AI Powering the Avocado Mental Health Companion. Okay, so it says a Happy AI set out to uh, build Avocado, an AI companion that offers accessible, empathetic and evidence-based support around the clock. Uh, each conversation is guided by cognitive behavioral therapy principles, which I like, by the way, CBT, allowing the system to suggest practical exercises and reframing techniques that fit an individual situation. So it sounds like they're trying to build like a, a therapist, I guess. There's not really any information at this point as to how the subnet works. There's miners and they do something. I'm not sure what they do. So I found their website here, happysmile.ai, and it was taking a quick look through it here. Originally started as, an, as a dot smile, a meme on optimism, but decided to become more, something more than that. There's also a red flag here that there's another coin apparently associated with it. To me, that's a big red flag if I don't understand how the tokenomics on the subnet work in the, in the first place and what work is actually being done. But this part looked kind of cool. So we are already using BitTensor to power our decentralized AI infrastructure. Um, this ensures that user data and conversations remain secure and are not shared with OpenAI or any other similar corporations. To me, this is kind of interesting, especially for like a mental health app. There's been a lot of news about how uh, OpenAI can be forced to share their information with governments around the world. And that can be especially concerning with mental health. I was actually able to find their chatbot, I guess, here on the Google Play Store. It's got 5,000 downloads. So to compare Happy AI with some centralized competitors here, I asked, what are the top AI chatbot therapist slash companion apps and their valuations? So, so far, AI is so new that I don't think there are any of these types of apps that have a valuation. Many of them have had funding rounds of, you know, 3 million or 90 million, uh, but no real valuations yet. And many of them have come out this year. And if you want my opinion on it, uh, AI is getting closer to the state where it can actually be a good therapist. The main thing for me is when I'm talking with an AI, that it doesn't interrupt me, that it's able to kind of pick up on some like social cues that are, are verbal, but not necessarily words. So I think AI therapist apps will be getting there in the next few years. But today, I think they're a little bit difficult to use unless you want to just like type to them. Yeah, so some of the centralized competitors here, Wysa, Earkick, Serena, uh, Uper, Wobot, uh, they all have funding rounds here of many millions of dollars, but none of them have valuations yet. So of the subnets that I looked at today, these lowest five in terms of price here, I'd say Flamewire and Bittrex are the ones that stand out to me. They're both clearly doing some work and they have no 
100% minor burn like many of the other lower price subnets here. And then the last thing that I like to do before taking the leap of investing in an alpha token is taking a look at the sum of alpha prices here. As I've said before, when this is low or closer to one, it's probably a better time to invest. When the prices were up here at two, we've had a lot of people that got in at this point and they're all underwater here as the sum of all alpha prices has descended for many months now. So we are getting into the buy territory right now. And then I'll also mention that um, despite me liking Flamewire and Bittrex, I don't have investments in them right now. I think they might be good buys right now considering the low sum of alpha prices and how they're doing a lot more work than the other low price subnets. So what I would do if I do put some money into this is it would be a small amount, something like 0.5% of my total portfolio, just in case these ones do go up two or three X and then I would take profit at that point because I think compared to some of the higher priced subnets here, like today's sponsor, Bitcast is a good one to compare against, at least in my mind, because I know the value that it is producing right now. Uh, so if you have another subnet that you know the value that they're producing, um, you know, you can compare it against them. So if Flamewire or Bittrex get up to that 0 0.006 range, I would certainly be selling by that point. So if you want to get access to Tau Flute, this dashboard here, you can go over to TauTemplar.com. The link is in the description. You can sign up for the Discord group that I'm starting shortly. And this dashboard here isn't quite ready for public use yet. However, I'll give beta access to those who join the group.